Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled City Council meeting. The meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our recording secretary, Ms. Fernari, to please take the roll call. Mike Bruno? Here. Tara Burkhardt? Here. Donald Cummings? Here. De Becky Ruby? Here. Dean Kilberg? Here. Craig Maladra? Here. Richard Marks? Here. Jean McGowan? Here. Jim Rudecki? Robert Swanson? Here. We begin tonight's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I would kindly like to ask our good friend Vic to lead us in the pledge. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we commence with the agenda tonight, I would like to extend to a young lady who's tuning in and has been tuning in to the city council proceedings since we enter the modern television age. Uh, her name is Mrs. Fick. Mrs. Fick, last Wednesday, May 31st, celebrated her 100th birthday. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be invited to participate in the celebration, and just like high school, when the cops arrived, we all ran out the back door. <laughs> Mrs. Fick was left there by herself, Mr. City Attorney. <laughs> so, Mrs. Fick, happy birthday. And perhaps most interesting is, just a month ago, she renewed her driver's license. Isn't that great? It's awesome, isn't it? It's awesome. Let's see, folks. Item 3A is to recognize our outgoing volunteer board and commission members. We have a distinguished group with us this evening. From the Cultural Arts Commission, serving from 2006 through 2016, an entire decade. Mr. Pornacosco, do you want to join us at the podium, sir? Pornacasso, excuse me. Vic, you've been a fixture here, man. I have, yes. That's good. And we were just talking about Shakespeare in the Park coming up in July, but this year you're not performing? I'm not performing this year, but I am helping with it. But you're not performing because of a good reason. Well, yes, because I... One of the reasons I did have to give up the commission, too, is because of the fact that I own a business, an auto repair business in Elgin, and we opened a second location in Carpentersville, and I've just been so busy that I haven't had time to do anything other than this. That's good news. Yeah, so. But I did enjoy myself when I was doing all the volunteering and stuff like that. Um, Shakespeare was one of the things that um, I helped get started uh, back, uh, I think it was 2007. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was there from the beginning. I, w I was. I was. I was one of the original members. And um, I also helped uh, start the uh, film festival. And I was uh, also one of the people who brought back the, uh, the, 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 the steeple walk. Because uh, there was another group that was doing it, but they were giving up on it. So I had a lot of fun. I had, I I had a lot of fun helping and serving. But I still, I still do serve as a volunteer. Um, I helped Gene quite a bit with, uh, with other things uh, for all the festivals. I will be at uh, the uh, uh, Swedish Days doing attendance or, or doing tickets and stuff at, at one of the tents. And I always help with set up the, the art the art fair. Right. And uh, I always, I, I love helping with the uh, uh, Festival of the Vine too, so. You do it all. I do, I do. And there's a young lady with you this evening as well who deserves just as much credit. Yes, yeah, so she, she allows me to do all this stuff. My wife, Sandy. So <laughs> she, she, she allows me to do, uh, do everything and you know, helps keep the house together and stuff like that too. But That's Sandy uh, has, had worked for years for the chamber, right. also. So I used it. That's how. That's how I ended up getting kind of roped into that stuff too. Roped in? <laughs> how did you get out? That's my question. I'm still not. You're still not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so without obviously just as a volunteer, then your salary decreases considerably. It did. Like well, my salary. I we we didn't get we didn't get paid for the, for the commission. Oh know, no, kidding! I misread that. I thought it was like a. No, we didn't get paid for the commission. I, I did it. I, just, I know. I'm teasing. I did it. I did it out of just love for the community and stuff like that. I wanted well, to give. Obvious. I wanted to give the community something. You know, give give the community something back. And I really enjoyed doing all that stuff. And uh, I love seeing like for Shakespeare. Is that my, your favorite event? My favorite one, yeah, is, is Shakespeare. Um, I got to tell you, I was I was the chair when it first started, mm -hmm. and I got to tell you about the dream I had the night before the first show. Is this okay for television? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I had a dream that I, 
was that we, we were doing, gonna do the first Shakespeare in the Park and there were two people in the audience and I was one of them. Uh -oh. <laughs> was Sandy there? <laughs> yeah, she was there. Okay. But, um, but um, it turned out really good. I think the first year we had like 150 people and now it's swollen to about 800 people. It's amazing. They come, come to see that every year, so. It's amazing. Yeah. We're all keeping our fingers crossed for good weather on July 15th. That's always my responsibility. Is so that right? I, I tell everybody I've got, I've got, I've got in. It's all with, yours. I've got in with the right people. So that's good. Would you object if we presented you with a small token of our appreciation? I would not object. Awesome. It's a, it's a picture of you dressed as Bill Shakespeare. Oh, there you go. Are you a classically trained actor as well, Vic? Uh, no, actually, um, the story on that is that um, the, the, the director that created the troupe, her name was Tony Hicks. Right, and as in Hicks um, music from... Well, Tony Hicks used to be a, uh, well, she, she still is a um, uh, theater teacher. Um, she, trained, she trained some people. She used to do it out in uh, Hollywood, California. And she, wow. um, uh, she also was Um, she now has moved back to California, and she's back into doing that kind of stuff. But um, I don't know if people know her claim to fame is this, is that um, one day she was doing a class, and um, she came into class, and one of the people, had, one, of, one of the students had brought a friend, okay? And this friend was sitting in the corner. So she told the friend, she goes, this is an acting class. You've got two choices. She said, one, you could leave and wait outside, or two, you could participate. Well, this gentleman decided to participate, and his name happened to be Cuba Gooding Jr. Really? And so he went, and she, was his, she was his first coach, and he went on to win uh, Best Supporting Actor. Exactly. And, and what did Miss Hicks tell you? Uh, take the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Serving on Geneva's Mental Health Board from 2013 to 2016 is Miss Cheryl Johnson. Cheryl, how are you? Welcome. Now, I know you're also very busy. I am. Are you? That's what happens when you're retired. I, it's, I, I hear that all, all the time. That's very true. That's yeah. very true. It's my privilege to serve uh, this year as the president of the Tri-City Family Services Board. And so, group. and I just want to say I enjoyed my time on the 708 board. Just um, when I came to Geneva in, on, in 2013, I wanted to be a part of the community. And so um, uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Jerry Murphy from 708 Inc. and Aurora called and said, hey, they've got an opening on their 708 board. What do you think? I said, well, okay. So, and, and the, the people that you have on that board, the women on that board are absolutely fantastic. They're great, aren't they? Um, Susie Sugarin is a great chair, and all of them are so knowledgeable and really up to date on everything that they need to make good um, ideas and recommendations uh, from their perspective as a 708 committee. That's wonderful. And you're chairman of the board this year as TCFS? I am. Holy, I am. you've got a big event coming up September 11th. Yes, we do. It's yes. our 50th anniversary. Amazing. And so um, we just, our, our uh, longtime director, Jim Otapka, just right. retired in April. And um, so uh, Jim uh, said, okay, I'm going, everything, you know, everything old is going. We're like, come on, Jim, right. it's not that bad. But so anyway, and Laura Ploss is our new uh, executive director. And she'd been our clinical director previously. And right. uh, it's just really uh, going to be a... Uh, which I say a breath of fresh air and, uh, you know, moving us forward for our next 50 years. Of course. And Miranda, your development director, is a wonderful person. Yes. Miranda yes. Barfus just came back and uh, is now our director of development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's fantastic. She'd been with us before and now she's back. So how are we doing as a community with respect to the mental health issues? 
I think Geneva's very on, very on top of its issues. Um, and certainly, you know, we, we talked about school issues. We right. certainly met with, you know, members of the police department that are uh, doing that work in the community. And um, I think that, um, you know, you're very much on top of it. And I think what I was impressed with also was the willingness to learn more and, and talk with us and, and people that um, are knowledgeable in mental health issues. And so um, I think you're certainly doing well. Good. Right path. And what are you going to do with all your free time now? Oh, I don't know. I think there's going to be a number of things that are that right? waiting in the wings. Yeah. Your calendar's full? Not yet, but that's the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for and you. had I not moved to Batavia, I would still be here. So. Well. <laughs> I know. I wasn't sure I should bring that up. but Maybe we can re-annex. <laughs> so anyway. I have a special gift for you as well. Thank you. I know we had received word we had received word that perhaps, but perhaps not. Uh, is Mary Ann here at Diggory? I didn't see her. What about Lauren Buckley? I didn't see. And I know that Ms. Juby and Mr. Burgess could not make it. So with those two just honored and recognized and appreciated, by all means, if you need to sneak out, we understand. Thank you again, both of you. Item four, folks, I'd like to entertain a motion to amend the agenda to remove number six from the agenda this evening. So moved. Alderman Burkhardt makes the motion. Alderman Marks makes the second. A roll call vote is in order. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Mark? Aye. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. That motion passes unanimously. Skipping down to item five, the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this city council. It can be enacted with one motion, unless a member of the council and or a member of the community wishes to remove an item for additional discussion. So moved. Motion to approve the omnibus agenda by Alderman Marks. Second. Seconded by Alderman McGowan. Any questions or comments on those items marked with an asterisk? Madam Recording Secretary, please take the roll. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. Motion passes with nine affirmative votes and one absent. And I should have mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, Mr. Radecki did advise me that he would not be present this evening, so I apologize for that late notice. Item, let's see here, my goodness. Item 11A, committees, okay. no correction. Time. Item 10, bills. municipal bills for payments. <laughs> we kindly ask our recording secretary to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Bills for payment this evening total $1,203,559.29. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items to add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet on the city website. A motion to pay the bills as presented. Offered by Alderman Bruno. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Marks. Any questions or comments on the bills as presented, available in your packet and on the city's website? Jean, if you would, take the roll. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. Item 10 passes with nine affirmative votes and one absent. Item 11A, Committee of the Whole, Items of Business, is approved resolution dash, excuse me, number 2017-47, accepting real estate purchase agreement to sell public property, parcel number 12-11-101-002, commonly known as the Chrissy site. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion by Marx, seconded by Bruno. Uh, for everyone's benefit this evening, any comments or questions regarding this matter should be related to and only to the sales price. Uh, secondly, um, 
any other discussion would be gaveled as out of order. So, and also, because it's a sale of public property, eight affirmative votes is required to advance this matter. That's eight affirmative votes of those holding office, not those present. That's of that the, corporate the corporate authorities, which includes the, authorities. Which includes the mayor. So mayor. it's yep. it's two thirds of 11, which translates to eight affirmative votes. Questions or comments? Did you get that, is that correct? I want to right now. <laughs> <laughs> Questions or comments from the dais? Alderman Bruno? Uh, I, I want to uh, kind of put a finer point on, on your point in terms of what this discussion is. This is a discussion strictly on agreeing to the sale, um, oh, not any referendum on any potential project that might be there, uh, which is a wholly separate uh, uh, public process. And I should clarify, the city attorney reminded me that obviously any questions or comments regarding the agreement in and of itself are, of course, allowed and encouraged. So anyone else besides Alderman Bruno from the dais? Anyone from the audience? Mr. Mayor and the city council members, I'm John Kiefer and my wife Christine is with me and we live in the most adjacent property to the uh, Chrissy Avenue uh, property that the city wants to sell. And uh, we would be uh, interested in the city um, selling it and uh, carefully considering it for uh, development. Um, as you know, we were kind of involved in that city plan three years ago, so we are we have a little uh, part of the property adjacent to the uh, uh, city lot that might go with it that might make a nice residential development and we would be happy to see that go in there. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in the audience regarding the sale? If not, we're ready for a vote. Ms. Fernari, when you are ready. Mike Bruno? Aye. Sarah Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Nay. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Nay. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Nay. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. I will vote, excuse me? Oh, I will vote aye. That's only seven votes, ladies and gentlemen. Would anyone who voted nay like to expound upon their vote? Not required, but I'm certain there are some in the audience who are curious. Silence? Very well, we'll move on. Uh, we're directed that it's outside the discussion. Fair enough. To bring anything else up. Fair enough. Is that true or is that, that not true? That is true. Item 11B is to approve resolution number 26. 17-48, authorizing transfer of property from the City of Geneva to the Geneva Park District. So moved. Bruno. And second was Marks. Excuse me. This again requires two-thirds of the corporate authority, which is eight votes, including myself. Again, this transfer is for the same use as it currently is, it's simply a transfer of land that the city owns to our friends of the Park District. Alderman Ruby? Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that Alderman Kilberg and I did go through the neighborhood and knock on doors, talk to the property owners of the surrounding homes, and we did not encounter any objections. Thank you. Sure. Alderman Kilberg? Uh, there were a couple things that the uh, residents uh, would hope that the Park District would uh, uh, give some consideration to uh, once they take, if this, uh, this passes, uh, they give consideration to as it relates to the property. One would be drainage because it retains water and it creates a problem with mosquitoes. And uh, it uh, has delayed the city's ability to mow the property as well. So. If the uh, park district hopes to mow that uh, with a wet spring in the future, uh, drain, some type of drainage tiling possibly might be necessary. The other uh, consideration that they uh, 
they brought forward was uh, the uh, erosion along the river bank and I believe that the park district already has plans to do some re uh, retention as it relates to uh, uh, some of the erosion that's taking place where it's cutting off the close to the bike path and that uh, this needs to be addressed in short order else there's going to be a problem with the bike path and passability in the near future. So um, again, uh, we didn't encounter anyone that was opposed to uh, this transfer. Mr. Mayor, I just want to bring to the council's attention really to the audience's attention that the next item on the agenda is affiliated with uh, item 11B. Um, if the resolution is adopted to transfer the property to the park district, then there is a consideration of uh, rescinding some old ordinances uh, of the city council and old ordinance of the city, oh, excuse me, two ordinances of the city council that really uh, had preserved this property for cemetery purposes and made it a covenant. And so those have to be uh, removed in order for the park district to uh, use the property in accordance with their plan. Alderman Burkhart. Yeah, quickly, I uh, had voted no against this transfer two weeks ago at Cow, and that was because I wanted to uh, make sure the residents of the area were in the loop and knew that this was a possibility. So I wanted to thank Alderman Kilberg and Ruby for going out and knocking on those doors and uh, knowing that there isn't any opposition in the area, I can change my vote and vote yes in favor of this transfer tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the dais? Anyone from the audience? Jean, when you have a moment. Mike Bruno. Aye. Tara Burkhardt. Aye. Donald Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Dean Kilberg. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Jean McGowan. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Mayor Burns vote. Aye. Item 11B passes with 10 affirmative votes and one absent. Item C, related to item 11B as stipulated by the city attorney, is to approve ordinance number 2017-15 rescinding ordinance number 63-17 and paragraph 3 of ordinance number 64-1. So moved. Marks makes the motion. Second. Seconded by McGowan. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Anyone from the audience? Gene, roll call please. By the way, this only requires a simple majority, majority of the uh, aldermen holding off. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart. Aye. Donald Cummings. Aye. Becky Ruby. Aye. Dean Kilberg. Aye. Craig Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Jean McGowan. Aye. Robert Swanson. Aye. Motion passes with nine affirmative votes and one absent. Item 11D is to approve ordinance number 2017-14, authorizing and providing for issue of not to exceed $12,500,000 for waste works and sewage revenue bonds, series 2017, Junior Lean IEPA for purpose of paying costs of necessary improvements to waterworks and sewerage system. So moved. Marks makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Cummings. Any questions or comments from the dais? Anyone from the audience? Mr. Simonian. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Council, um, this issue has been brought up uh, a few times before, and I, uh, I did a little uh, calculations regarding uh, borrowing money from ourselves versus borrowing from the EPA fund. And if you take, we have 21 total accounts in the enterprise fund, which equate to 10 and 10.4 million dollars, and. Um, I got a breakdown from Stephanie today, thank you very much, on those interest rates. And if we were to borrow the $10.4 million from ourselves versus borrowing from the EPA fund, we could save the taxpayers approximately $1.22 million over the next 20 years in payments on that, on that interest. I'm not recommending that we borrow the 10.4, but there's one fund here, it's in a money market, for a little over $5 million. If we borrowed that if, from ourselves, we could save the taxpayers about $560,000 in um, interest payments over the next 20 years. 
and I think that uh, it would be a good move to borrow from ourselves at a much better rate than we are borrowing, um, or the money's making that we are uh, presently uh, planning on doing. I know the vote tonight needs to, you need to make the vote, but I don't think you need to um, uh, borrow the money because I think I asked last time if there was any prepayment penalties, but to secure the 12 and a half million, I would recommend moving forward to do that tonight, but look into possibly saving some taxpayer dollars down the road from borrowing mm -hmm. from the enterprise funds. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience? Anyone from the dais? Alderman Cummings? Um, Stephanie, what are the, what are the uh, arguments against that? Sorry, One of the main arguments is that we have various bond covenants with bonds that are already in the electric fund that we have to keep a certain reserve. So if we go below that reserve, then we're not in compliance with those covenants. And then we have a fund balance policy as well. So, How much wiggle room is there between the amount required for the bond covenant? And I don't know that off the top of my head. I, okay. I'd have to go through the various bond issuances and, and review that. Usually I think they're at 125% the bond coverage so but this is a new subject uh, and I don't think <coughs> Stephanie and certainly I didn't mm -hmm. contact our existing bond council for either the electric bonds that are outstanding or any other water and sewer water bond issue at all. yeah water can't do it at all it would be the electric fund that would be in question and I'm, I'm not sure what the status of that would be with uh, Chapman and Cutler who have been the bond council on all of the electric bond issues for many, many years. I think it's it's an interesting idea. We're getting two tenths or three tenths or four tenths or something of a percent on the money that we're keeping invested, and we're going to borrow at X percent. And so there's a difference between that two or three or four tenths of a percent and the X percent. And um, you know, until the bond issue comes to market, we don't know what the cost is. On the other hand, um, half a million dollars is sort of interesting. I, I would just add some of the liquidity in here that are at the lowest interest rate is because of what, what we're trying to do with the Southeast Area Master Plan, knowing that there may be some future expenses and some is for obviously rainy day. <coughs> Alderman Marks? Mayor, I, I guess a question for, for Stephanie. Approving this tonight is just the maximum we can borrow. We don't have to take all, all twelve million five. We can we can look at this <coughs> as we get farther on down the line. Correct. I as mean, I understand, they, they they advance a large portion of it, and it's a reimbursable kind of thing as we spend it. Yeah, as we expend and then there is no prepayment penalty. So if down the road we wanted to refinance it a different way, we could do so. Yeah, and there is a fixed rate on this, right? It's that like is 2 correct. Percent, correct? Uh, I, I know it's it was, 20 years. Yeah, it's 20 years. I know that. I thought it was. Um, it's like it's like one point. It's it's less I than two percent. Yeah, it's plus. I just rounded it up, but it is. So, well, and the other point. factor, and I believe the Superintendent Ben Geskin <coughs> mentioned it at a previous meeting, is that we need to step in line. Here right, and I'm saying we need IEPA. to approve this tonight, right. and I don't disagree. But yeah. it's something. As we start going down the line, we can do that research and, and address it at that point, correct? Okay. And one, I, I one and three quarters. One and three quarters. Yeah, I thought it was one point. But, but um, I mean, I know we have to get in line tonight right. to make sure we get it so that the state sets it aside. But, but it's something we can look at if we don't have to pull it all down. That's what I wanted to make sure of. Thank you. Anyone else from the dais? <clears throat> Jean, can we have a moment? Roll call. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. Item 11D passes with nine affirmative votes and one absent. Ladies and gentlemen, we skip down to item 13, and that's new business. I know we do have a guest here this evening. I promised you your first crack, so welcome. We kindly ask that you just please share your name and who you're representing this evening, if you may. And thank you um, for the opportunity to speak. Thank and you. please excuse me if I have to read from my notes. This is not what I do best. Um, my name is Carrie Tatone, and I am one of the business owners of The Gathering, and we are located um, at 227 
South 3rd Street, Suite 104, in, inside the very house. Um, the reason why we were invited here tonight for the city to reconsider the gathering's A-frame to once again be established on the public way that would direct passer buyers to enter the Berry House, then enter our shop. We were surprised at the change denial of allowing us to put our A-frame where it can be seen. For years prior to the current code and during until the pa this past May, many in the Berry House were given that right to have A-frames in the public view and way due to the lack to no direct access to visibility to 3rd Street. As, as each of you know who, who are on 3rd Street, during these events and these festivals, there could be thousands of people outside. And we in the Berry House see little to no people trickle inside. The first time my husband and myself came to Geneva was passing through, and since that day it has become one of our favorite places. So when my husband, Joe, my business partner right here, um, encouraged me to open the shop, who, can say, who could say no? Um, I had been working this business part-time for almost 10 years. Opening was now fulfilling a dream. In March of 2016, we opened our doors, and at that time, it was our mistake not to purchase the license for our A-frame because you don't prorate it, and May was the first day. Um, but it wasn't until May of 2016 when we started seeing a real shopping presence inside our shop. For those of you who have never been to the gathering, again, we are inside the Berry House. We have no windows nor any direct access that is exposed to 3rd Street or the adjoining Street Franklin. You have to walk inside the building's, building's either entrance on the main level and pass three shops then you come to the gathering. We face walls, a hallway, and a stairway. With our A-frame sign, we, uh, um, we were approved. Now, most enter by chance, or here we have a public bathroom, and we're sent in by another shop to go in the Berry House. As the gathering, we have continued to advertise in local sell selling sites, antique flyers, social media, newspaper, and local magazines. We even sell and advertise to local TV shows, movie sets, which brings the property masters and set decorators to town, and I'm doing so as of today. Um, for us, our experience, it has been nothing like having that A-frame in the public's view for that passer, buyer walking or driving by. I personally work, uh, work, six, I work at the shop six to seven days a week, almost asking everybody, how did you hear about us? When the A-frame was allowed to be on the public way in front of the building, 95 people, 90, about 95 percent of the people said that they saw the A-frame in, in front of the building. Since that change, um, almost nobody sees my A-frame where I'm able to put it now on the private, the private side. Um, um, I, I, I won't get into the exact details, but. As of May 1st, year to date, prior to May 1st, we were exceeding in percentage of last year's figures um, fairly well. But as of May 1st um, and into the 10 days into May, we had a humongous decline in, in sales and people coming into the shop. And we ended up in the month at a huge, huge loss. I'm asking each of you before you make this decision our request is that you truly ponder, ponder this. And again, some of you, I'm inviting you again to come to the shop. And before you make this decision, I want you to come and witness firsthand what we're trying to build, see our commitment not only to the shop, to the building, but to Geneva. We would truly like to continue to grow our presence on 3rd Street. And does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> questions from Mr. Tone? Alderman Burkhart. I want to say, Carrie, I've been in your shop several times, and you have beautiful items. You have such an eye and really unique pieces that I don't see anywhere else. So I do want you to be successful. I think you're a real asset to Third Street and the Berry Shop. So um, I know we've had a lot of emails on this, but I got to say, it's hard for me to comprehend. I mean, has has something changed from on our A-frame 
policy that's affected her or it, it seems like what we heard today was this dates back a number of years the policy can we talk about that the policy date back dates back to 2012 11, 11. it was given a year sunset it was reviewed and nothing was changed based on direction by the council therefore 2012 so what has changed for Carrie because it seems like she feels that something <clears throat> has changed with her ability to put out an a-frame uh, Carrie if I, if I may you and I had multiple conversations we met here at City Hall once I think mm -hmm. the, the long and short of it is uh, we the city of Geneva erred in granting a a-frame permit to Mr. Tone that would uh, allow that a-frame to be on public property we discovered the error after the fact we chose to abide by what we issued and then correct it when the request was made again for the spring of this year is that a fair statement well it's actually incorrect because I oh. was actually taking the spot of the previous um, business owner which was called the stable woman and she was there for several years and I took her spot and um, well, that's the one that was issued here. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, but I just didn't take it over. That's the spot actually I was taking. But but due to um, some physical health challenges, when I called um, the city and told them that I would like to move it and showed them where, I was told that wouldn't be a problem, but just resubmit the the floor plan of where it would be, and I did I did everything, and then they said within a few days we'll let you know. So about two weeks later. Um, something in the interim happened and they said that we're not going to approve you but however since we already approved you um, for public go ahead and have it on the public way but in the interim I was trying to explain to them this is was it new there's other shops that actually had it on the public way and that was all taken away from all of them so any more questions Anyone from the dais? Alderman Cummings? What is the, what do we feel the purpose of the ordinance is that we have? Who could speak to that? I can try. So, uh, the, the, you mean the purpose restricting A-frames on the public right away? Yes. You keep them off the sidewalks. So basically you'd get a proliferation of A-frames on the sidewalks. Uh, the specific issue that I recall was a business on Campbell was placing their A-frame on public right away on 3rd because they wanted the exposure on 3rd Street. Uh, they were placing it on the sidewalk and other businesses on Campbell felt that because the one was doing that that they should all be able to do that. So it's really just uh, trying to find a way to, because prior to this, A-frames weren't allowed, period. So the purpose of the ordinance is to try and find a way to let some use of this occur without so much use of this that we're all stepping around the signs and the signs are getting knocked all kiddiwampus and left lane flat and things like that. So the year during the year that we had the you know study time or whatever, we found that some people weren't, you know, they're supposed to bring them in at night. Some people weren't bringing them in at night. Some people were leaving them laying flat mm -hmm. during the day and things of that nature. So it's really trying to find a way to enable without that enablement causing a different sort of problem. Do I understand that correctly? There were a, there were a couple other public uh, safety issues uh, prior to the ordinance, the size, because there were some that were consuming half of the sidewalk or more. Um, more than twice the size of, of what the, the maximum requirement is today. And as uh, Alderman Malaja said, um, uh, I'm not talking about aesthetics, but the fact that the signs remained uh, past the close of business of the shops they were advertising. So there was uh, concerns about signage being on the sidewalks at all times of the day, day and night. And for, and for those businesses that were off of 3rd Street, it's not like we necessarily left them hanging. We, we took a look at what we were calling uh, like, like wayfinding signs and things like that. So we put, we put signs on 3rd pointing people to, you know, these shops are down this way and stuff, which is different than A-frames. You can't, you know, say what you have on sale today or anything like that. But 
we try to find a way to to assist. I think it would be an interesting discussion to have about the Berry House in particular. These multi-tenant buildings are uh, kind of a different issue than a you know than somebody halfway down Campbell or whatever. Um, but the same thing. How many how many tenants are in the Berry House? And if everybody there was allowed to put an A-frame on the public right away, how would that look? But not everybody chooses to. There's only about I think four businesses that choose to do that. Right, but there's nothing we do that could control that. They all chose to do that, and we changed the ordinance to enable it. Then we would have to deal with that issue. So well, it's some of the business is because they their their lease option is to the frontage property in front of the Berry House too. So like Top Dog is in front so uh, and they're on, on the grass. Private property the grass, would work, right. Correct. And then uh, the wine shop, Geneva Cellars, they um, have it right in front of theirs. So you don't have exposure, street exposure at all? Not at all. So what if we put it on private property? Right now I'm, I'm hanging it on a fence. And it's very hard for me to stick it up on the fence with um, um, my, my arthritis. Right. Today, I had to leave it outside when I closed because it had ants all over it. Where I hang it on the fence, nobody um, coming south on 3rd can see it. And so it's in the middle of the fence because El Mocajete has it on the edge because they can no longer have it on the public way. And no, nobody really knows it's a restaurant, you know, up there. I'm, in, I'm there every day. You know, I hand out, um, you know, the Chambers brochures. I hand about, about 10 every Monday and telling people where to go shop and where to go you, eat. Do you know how many of them are out in front on the private property now? Um, I think have, I we have, have, no, I, I just, I know that it's the cupcake shop is on private. Um, El Mocajete, myself. Top Dog is on private. And so is... Um, uh, the coffee drop shop so in the winter time though because there's snow so I was putting it out of the public way um, I think the whole time I've been there I think once I drove around the corner and saw that I had left it out parked and then went and brought it inside the shop um, but during the winter when the snow is packed uh, you know was up high I actually we were putting it on the private side no, yeah. so it's really during you know the warm and nicer climates when people are out there even when I requested I didn't know that you had to pick, um, pick one place so I picked a few but I was putting it like maybe behind the bench you know at some times and nobody's really walking there ever and I do walk out there every now and then even on the fence seeing on the fence to make sure that it's okay and not harming anybody because it it's, it's a pretty heavy sign, and we added wheels on it to help me out, too, as well, and a handle. So, Good. so I, think, I think a multi-tenant building is worth digging into, but I don't think the answer is going to be easy. It's going to take some discussion, in my opinion. And then again, I'd like you to come. Come and see and see what my, my challenge is every day. Mm -hmm. We try to get those people that are you know outside, inside. Last Christmas walk, Joe walked outside and he goes, there was nobody in there. And usually there's, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people on the street. He says there's thousands of people outside. There's about at least 10,000 people. And he goes, how come nobody's coming in here? So it's just a way, I mean, we're spending money on advertising to get people in. I am told to stop posting so much on social media. I'm told one, one post a week. So I'm trying to limit... Um, my posting that way. I advertise an antique treasure hunt, uh, treasure hunter magazine. I did took out a whole page ad. We are the first to bring into Illinois um, from HGTV. Um, it's um, a paint line that is a low VOC. It's um, a self priming paint. I teach people how to paint. Um, I am fourth generation in the jewelry business. I have. Um, um, a new jewelry line in sterling silver that kind of represents the antique primitive folk art type of stuff that we sell. So I'm constantly um, building on merchandise to draw people in, constantly advertising. I have a jewelry designer coming in. We're going to preview her work on June the 16th. Um, so, and then she's going to be making jewelry for me. Um, she 
her jewelry is in two stores in California. She sells out all the time and she's gonna be here for Swedish days. So I'm constantly trying to build and bring people in so that they know and once they're in and once they see what we're all about, it doesn't mean they have to buy but maybe they know what we have and they can recommend it or they can come back another time. And so that A-frame though, I remember one of my first days after being there, you know, already 60 days and a lady came in, she goes, I had no clue you were even in here. Those little oval signs that are in the front, they're so homogeneous that you cannot even tell the shops from each other. I asked if I can change the color, I was told no. So that A-frame enables people just to pass by and they go, oh, I didn't know that kind of a shop was in there. And then when they come in the door, they didn't even know their shops were in the building. So because it's a historical building, they can't change any type of frontage. We've tried to get the building owner to add the awning that was back in the front so people would know that was an actual door. They have no idea. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we have to, a lot of us that are in the building go to the door because people don't even know how to open it. So, anyways. Thank you. Alderman Malaudra, anything else? No, oh, sir. Alderman Ruby? I was just curious if you had any other suggestions, um, brainstorms outside of the A-frame, if there are any other um, types of signs or you know, a, a different, you know, like a, a sign attached to a lamppost kind of thing or something along those lines that, that you would request that the city might consider allowing just to give you the presence on the street but without <coughs> Well, the building has the, the berry shops and there's the two, probably the major anchors of the building are on that sign itself. But even then, I don't think people are even looking at that sign. Um, Is you know, your name on that main sign or not? Um, no, we're on, the, we're, on, we're on the front. There's all the stores are on the front and on the, on the side. And nobody ever says they've come in from that signage. Sure. We've talked to the building owner of how to re-beautify it, how to redesign it. Um, so that it'll enable people to come in so that maybe we don't have to have the A-frames. You know, I, um, I have a family member that says they want to dress up in, for Swedish days sure. in front, you know, and put an arrow to bring people, you know, to bring people in. So, I mean, what it's about, a joke, but, you know, we're trying everything. I, maybe I shouldn't say this out loud right now, but what about, like, painting something on the sidewalk? Is that a word? <coughs> <laughs> Is that against every rule? Like even the sidewalk chalk, I mean, but something you know more permanent than that, just to draw people's attention to to your shop. Something I know like that, that Swedish Days is a great um, business opportunity. So whether I sell anything or not, just to be outside and sure. you know, hey, we have a shop inside. Have you heard about? It? Did you know these are shops? And I originally started at Geneva Antique Market, and I stood outside and I directed probably thousands of people inside you know just so they knew that there was a sidewalk sale inside and that there was three levels inside with businesses in, inside there so um, I don't know about sidewalk chalk I don't mind drawing because that's my background but I don't know if that would end up becoming something where somebody would complain about Alderman Bruda uh, thank you, Mayor. I, uh, this whole discussion predated my uh, my tenure here, but uh, I must have been around because I remember talking about this a lot. Um, uh, it hasn't been brought up too, but I think a, an important component of the restrictions were clutter. There was concern with too many signs being downtown and just generally diminishing the uh, downtown. But uh, uh, like uh, like Alderman Maladra, I do recognize that uh, Berry Shop uh, uh, multi-tenant building in particular is uh, pretty challenging. Thank you. Alderman Kilberg. Yeah. Um, uh, I might suggest what you do is you go to the east side about, a, about 100 yards west of uh, the Harrington on the river and actually what they do there is, is they drag their merchandise out to the street and they display it 365 days of the year. And uh, uh, maybe that might be a solution. You really don't need a A-frame then. 
That's just a suggestion. Alderman McGowan. Um, I just want to point out that when people uh, come to a town such as Geneva, they like antiques and they like to see antiques and they they need help finding those antiques. They need a sign. So um, I think it's important to communicate the fact that you do that you are a purveyor of antiques and, and people want to know that and we should we should help people um, get that information especially if it's right if it's so accessible right on Third Street and they don't even know it so um, I don't have a solution for you right now but that's what um, I feel very strongly that if we have if you have antiques that people need to know about it so, thank you ultimately and mr. Tony you and I spoke about this the the will of the council to investigate amending the current a frame side and ordinance rests with them. If this council this evening so directs our professional staff to re examine this issue and bring back code modifications, uh, that's up to this council. Um, for what it's worth, it would also involve the invitation to property owners, business owners, Chamber of Commerce, citizens, you know, everybody. And the history of this issue is such that. All those parties were involved from the get-go, and the ordinance today is a result of that collaboration. So, but again, if the council wishes to re-examine this issue as it relates to this particular item, strictly up to the council. Can I yes. add one thing? Yes. Okay. Can we talk? Can we do a fifth Monday discussion? Absolutely. I um, I called code enforcement because Movable Feast has their A-frame on the corner of Franklin and Third Street. And he says, well, they don't have a physical presence on Third St Street. And I says, well, I, I don't either. And he says, well, the building's door is on Third Street. I go, but that is not my door. I'm suite 104. We're different suites within the building. So why, what is the difference there? So last year he said, because I said, that, well, the cupcake shop is approved. And he goes, well, the, the verbiage was that they're on Franklin. So anybody who's on the side streets can have an A-frame out in the public way. So it's, it's a continual, you know, it's been a continual change. So I would love to have it reconsidered. I would love for you guys to come out and see how we're laid out. Is there consensus with respect to asking our team to re-examine this issue and bringing it forward for consideration at the earliest convenience? Yes. I, would, yes. I would sooner it be a fifth Monday than invest staff time. Yep. So currently the first fifth Monday is July 31st and we already have three items on that agenda, Are you, which is about what we can handle on a fifth Monday. So the question, and that's the first one. So the question is whether you're looking at it for that date or the next fifth Monday. What are the items? Maybe we could bump one. Uh, sales tax referendum. Uh, no, don't want to bump that. Uh, insurance broker. I don't want to bump that. And there's one other one that at the moment escapes me, but bump but they're that. all they're they're all rather <coughs> lengthy discussions. Change oh, change. Thank you. Change of fiscal year. We can certainly examine those light agendas that are coming up and, and, and certainly place it on the same evening as a light agenda, and we can obviously notify you when that will be. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Is that you. fair? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, everybody. Correct. We do have direction. There is consensus. Yeah. Anyone else in the audience? Any new business? Mr. Simonian? Thank you again, Mayor. Tom Simonian, 921 South Batavia Ave. I wanted to discuss this during the Chrissy uh, agenda item until we we're told we can only talk about the, the dollar amount. Yeah, and, now that, and now that issue is, is not supine but dead, so Anything and everything is available for discussion, which um, I'm looking forward to. Well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, my first question is, is why could only the dollar amount be discussed when? Well, the dollar amount and the agreement, which I clarified. 
It was on a sale of property. Okay. We could not discuss anything about what could or could not be built there. Zoning, request for change of zoning, et cetera, because it wasn't relative to the price. Okay. Well, maybe I could have read this or maybe I could have discussed this. I'll discuss it anyhow so I can get it on record. Um, because I'd be interested to find out why the folks who voted no voted no. And um, I also would recommend that all council members be here on a supermajority vote. But uh, that said, uh, in 2016, the city council agreed to get the city site appraised and announce the sale of the property to any interested party with no conditions, not density, not type of housing, not anything. It was just the sale of the property. Uh, only one group responded and offered the appraised value at 100%, the $775,000. The developer also moved forward in securing conditional agreements with the two other sites to the north of the city site that was for sale. And the reason why is because, according to the developer, IDOT and KDOT said that the city site itself could not be developed as proposed because access would not be allowed. And the other two sites to the north, if included in development, would allow access to the development. Uh, since the city of Geneva had not validated this statement with IDOT or KDOT, you have to assume that the developer is correct. And if the statement is correct and the city does not support this deal, uh, then in my opinion, uh, the city needs to get an opinion from IDOT or KDOT with regards to the access for any future development on the city site with or without the additional uh, two sites to the north. And if the site can't be developed with accessibility without those two, two lots, then I think the city is in a position where they have to seriously consider purchasing those lots in order to do anything with that area moving forward in the future. Only one, only one group responded to the sale of the city property, which the city's required to get a minimum of 80% of the appraised value. And this offer came in at 100% of the appraised value, and no one else even submitted an offer. Based on the developer's proposed plans for the property, the city would benefit about $30,000 a year in additional uh, taxes. The school district would benefit about $250,000 a year in additional taxes, and the park district and library would also benefit in additional taxes. Um, I learned uh, a number of years ago from Alderman um, Cummings to look at things risk versus reward. So I, you look at the pros of this, and the no, the, you, we have a known developer who most recently is finishing up with a very successful park place development next to Wheeler Park. Uh, the projected cost per unit at the beginning of that, if you recall, when we had this discussion, was $440,000 to $450,000 per unit. It looks like it's going to end up somewhere in the five hundred seventy dollars to $580,000 range, which benefits every taxing governing body in, in Geneva. Uh, the developer went ahead and got secured the two lots to the north of the property already under contract to accommodate IDOT and KDOT's access requirements. Um, when I talked to this developer a number of years ago, well, not a number of years ago, a couple of years ago about the potential interest here, I recommended that whatever you do, try and connect to Island Park. And he has proposed that because I think it's a huge coup for that, for those residents in that development to be able to cross to Island Park, whether they're going to go to the train, to downtown, et cetera, then versus having to come all the way down to 38 and across the bridge that way. And he did that, or he's proposing that. City's receiving full appraised value, uh, and it adds needed density to the downtown area and supports the downtown master plan, the amended downtown master plan, because when I started here in 2013, my first encounter with the public was with the group, that entire group up there, who was adamantly against the proposed downtown master plan because it showed, I believe, a five or six story development next in, in, that, in that area. So uh, Alderman Maladra, myself, Alderman, I mean, Mayor Burns, and uh, Dick Unch took on that challenge. I didn't take it on. I just sat back and was a, was a, 
was a spectator because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, in the next 10 years, the city will receive in excess of 300,000 in additional taxes. The next 10 years, the schools will receive in excess of 2.5 million in additional taxes. Obviously, the park district and library as well. And you have the majority of the support of all the residents in that area for this type of a develop for this development. If this were my money, and it is because I am a property taxpayer, the risk reward ratio isn't even close. And I think if it was our individual money and we were making this decision individually, it wasn't even close. So in conclusion, I recommend the city council supporting this sale, but that's uh, already passed. Just a but, point of clarification, it can certainly be reconsidered, as you well know, by anyone voting in the majority. And that, so, that was going to be, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe someone will uh, reconsider. But the city is receiving 100% of the appraised value of the property. The parcel has many, many challenges, as we know. Uh, we're working with a proven and known developer. The development will be able to be accessed without putting any restrictions on the residents of the development, such as right in and right out only. Development will connect to Island Park. It supports the downtown master plan and density needs and concerns. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that? Will generate additional taxes for all governing <coughs> bodies of Geneva. And lastly, and probably most importantly, we have the majority support from the residents of the neighborhood. And it just, I guess, for what it's worth, I think this one was a no-brainer, but time will tell. And if uh, two years, three years, five years, six years count go past and all this opportunity and money is lost and that property still remains there, I'll be back here to remind those who voted no. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I clarify so that yes. the vote can be reconsidered by those in the minority who were the successful we're talking about the people who voted no, the three who voted no. Who, who defeated the motion, correct. Right, <clears throat> because they were the successful correct. party. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Welcome. Hello. <coughs> I'm Matt Kroll, uh, 217 Chalmers Street. So I'm right across the... Uh, I'm off of Chalmers Street, but I'm right across from where this development would go in. Um, I was part of the group that originally was very concerned about the uh, master plan and the uh, apartment complex there. <clears throat> this looked a lot better to us. Um, it looked like it got the <clears throat> area some development, which I think is needed. Um, and I think um, a lot of my neighbors think that there's some development there that would be good for the area, um, but wasn't so dense that we were concerned with traffic and so on. So uh, yeah, we would, I think, um, I suspect the majority of the folks in that area, including myself, my wife certainly, uh, would support uh, that type of development there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kroll, may I ask you, first a off-target question, are you, are you related to the Krolls of Geneva, Long? No. Okay. So I was going to say, good God, I think I coached you in Little League. No, so, no that wasn't me. That was not you. So your no. baseball career is still flourishing. Yeah, sure. That's, that's good. <laughs> um, what I hear you saying, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is mm. for those who voted no, why did you vote no? Yeah, that's, I'm very interested to hear that. Is, uh, why Since did we have no Since everything is votes? on the floor, um, we have every right to discuss this issue holistically. And so. maybe there's something I don't know. I definitely want to hear that. I think if that. there is, then we're all going to learn something. Yeah, uh, but I definitely, so both, right? One, I want to make sure you understand, as someone who lives very close in the area, I would like to see that developed. Right now, it's just kind of a dump. Um, and I think the kids like it, but to be honest, I'd rather see something there. Uh, and then uh, fully agree, yeah, I'm stuck around here tonight because I wanted to see if this came back up because I want to understand what the concerns were. Maybe if there's rational concerns, then that would help me. Thank you. Before I recognize Dr. Keeper, anyone from the dais wishing to comment, perhaps provide a response to Mr. Kroll and, or a response to Mr. Simonian or, or a response to the developer or, excuse me, would-be purchaser? Dr. Keeper. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Cummings. Sorry, Doc. 
You can come up, though, if you'd like. It's a better view. Um, I, I like the development that was presented to me. Uh, I would like even more to see higher density in there. Um, and, and that's why I voted the way that I did. Uh, I would have explained that earlier. Couldn't, but that's, um, that's my thought right now. Our Geneva needs higher density. Uh, we're, we're underrepresented in high density housing. Um, we need density and we don't have it. And I think this is an opportune site for that. Uh, I don't think it blocks anybody's views. Uh, we won't get traffic zooming through neighborhoods. I think it's an ideal site for something that is denser than the project. Uh, that was presented to me. I, looking back, I don't know if it was um, good that you came to the office and showed me the project. Maybe ignorance is bliss. Maybe I would have voted for it. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, but that's... That's, that's the problem. It's not, a, it's not a dollar price issue in my mind. Thank you. Could I? Uh, do you mind trying to recognize Dr. Cooper? I recognize him. Can I go first? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't want you to pull a muscle going back and forth, man. So. Dr. Kiefer, the floor is yours, sir. Well, I would just like to add to the, uh, to the layout of that property. Um, if any of you have taken a good look at the, the wood lot, there's a very steep road to get down into that. Uh, that you know, real, realistically, only the big city trucks go in and out of there. Like, I don't know that you could do it in a regular car most of the year because it's a very high incline. I think if that property is developed, it has to have the old McBain property, which is you know next to it, uh, two and a half acres as part of it, because I. As far as I can see, I think you have to have that property to, to get out of there. In the 1960s, well, we've been in our house, which is the adjacent house, the furthest one that's left now, south of the Mill Race Inn property. And we have a pretty steep driveway there. And you know, we had talked to the previous owner who built it, Mr. Barney, we're the second owners of a 1930 house. The driveway wasn't always so steep. When they put the railroad overpass, uh, the overpass was said to be too high, the overpass over 25, so you could have like two trains on top of each other going under there. As a result, you can't get up the hill, uh, especially at the woodlot. So I, I think that any development has to have the whole seven and a half acre piece. Um, and then also, um, you know, we have, you know, Matt is one of my neighbors here, but we've had, had a number of uh, neighbors, a pretty good group, and then both of our aldermen had been there in uh, January, February at our place, and I think everybody would uh, agree that, you know, what was proposed uh, would be ideal. Um, you know, in 2012, we did um, have the city council reaffirm it would be residential zoning and um, I think the neighbors you know were all very interested in this in view of the previous um, proposal from Mr. Unch to have a six-story apartment so well that proposal is not from Mr. Unch as you and I have discussed that proposal was the result of the downtown master plan area being approved by the citizens and this council all so right. let's not heap that responsibility on our retired friend okay. Mr. Unch all right May I bring up another subject? Oh, absolutely. The floor is yours. <clears throat> well, I think, you know, as the city is carefully considering development, I'd like to speak about that Campana property. 
Actually, Dr. Kiefer, no. Um, <laughs> let's discuss this issue until we're exhausted, and then we can certainly address and respond to any comments regarding anything else. But I suspect there's others that might want to speak regarding the Chrissy site and the sale thereof. Is there anyone else? I know Alderman Maladra. Um, so my, qu my question was basically going to be, I favor more density. I don't, I don't understand how we define how much density is the right amount of density. I'm trying to put myself in the position of a plan commission or a zoning board who's contemplating a, a change from, I think it's rural residential to uh, some sort of multifamily and saying, well, no, we don't think it's high enough. Well, we don't think it's high enough. We don't think it's high enough. Ah, now we think it's just right. Um, what we have is, is, a, is a good offer financially. Um, there had been some talk previously about how we think we could get more, and maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. What we do know is this. We have one offer, which I believe speaks to what the market sees this property as being worth. The average between a dollar and $775,000 is probably about $775,000. Um, and we have a development that does change the character of the neighborhood. Um, rather than diving into a deep, all-encompassing change along the lines of what was originally proposed in Opportunity Site Number 6, to which the neighborhood reacted quite strongly uh, in opposition, um, this is a, I don't want to call it necessarily a happy medium, but it's, it's moving into a change of increased density in a rural residential area in such a way that it brings more rooftops into the downtown, gets us a bridge connection to Island Park, uh, and builds out the southern end of an area that's going to fill in with whatever change is proposed down at Mill Race Inn as well. And who knows what kind of density that's going to bring, or what kind of density would wind up in TIF District Number 3, or even indeed the density that we would get at the Marquette property, which I'm pretty sure is going to be back in some flavor. Um, so to just hold out and, and deny this opportunity for the vague uh, expectation that we'll get more, either money or units or rooftop, I think is unfair to the developer. I think it's unfair to the neighbors. I think it's unfair to the community. If we want more, we should start talking about exactly what that is. But therein lies the problem. If we do that, then we run the risk of basically approving projects without taking them through the public approval process. Um, so what I would have rather seen this, the path this take is that we agree to the sale of the property, the developer takes his proposal through the public process, and the public process puts its stamp on the character of what that development ends up being which I think is the way it's supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen with a preconceived notion, however vague or concrete, from the city council. That's it. Anyone else in the dais? Before I recognize Alderman Cummings for a second time? Alderman Bruno? I guess I would just add a little bit to uh, what Alderman Maladro was, was saying. <clears throat> he had a several hour meeting with uh, the uh, potential buyer, and uh, I think it was pretty clear um, that I too wanted more density. Um, and I think it would be that public process and the consensus of this body in the end that would hone in on what what that density is to get uh, uh, the, the you know the type of density that we need, the type of density that could be acceptable to. Uh, to the neighborhood, we've got um, we've got a very small number of substantial sites to be developed. Uh, we have definite needs for higher density. Um, I we don't have a lot of room for experimentation, and I think we need to try and uh, sharpen our knife on on what we can do with density. Given that we've only got so many options to to work with that, thank you, Alderman Cummings. Um, I'll ask for your 
recommendation on how to word this, but I'd like to uh, bring this up again. <laughs> a simple motion to reconsider this action can be offered by anyone who voted. Now, here's, here's the click, voted in the, voted against it. That motion to reconsider has to be seconded. And then I believe the motion to reconsider has to be considered. It's brought back on the floor for discussion. It's debatable. It's debatable. And then that, that vote is taken, but then, and if, it, if the motion to reconsider is approved, correct. then the new, uh, then a, a motion to consider the main. To approve the main motion. motion in yeah. an order. All right, well, I'd that make. Seems a, clear. I'd, I'll make a motion to uh, reconsider this. Second. The motion on the floor is a motion to <clears throat> reconsider, forgive me for my notes here, item 11A, which is resolution number 2017-47. There's a motion to reconsider by Alderman Cummings that's seconded and can be seconded by anyone. It doesn't have to be anyone voting. Alderman Bruno already made that offer. Oh, sorry. So that is on the floor. Now we will entertain a vote to consider the motion to consider. This requires only a simple majority. It does not require two-thirds of the corporate authority. Questions or comments from anyone who's taken Latin? <laughs> no? So if we want to bring this up again to discuss again, we would vote? That's correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. Roll call, Gene. Yes, sir. Certainly, the agenda, the council's still in session. Uh, it's a motion to reconsider. It didn't have to be done at the time of the agenda item. We're at uh, new business. Sir, we new business, though. So, in other words, you can bring up anything under new business well, and take action? The city council also has a provision that it can uh, suspend its rules. And in essence, that's what I'm. I you're consulted you're with the city interpreting this as a suspension of the rules. Right? Suspending the rules. Correct. Under the city code. Correct. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. At the risk of contradicting the city attorney, I'm interpreting this as since this council session is not yet adjourned, we can consider or reconsider anything that we've done tonight. It's until that adjournment. In fact, if this meeting would have adjourned, or perhaps still does adjourn, we have until no later than Monday evening, July 19th, for a reconsideration on this June matter. 19th. Or June 19th, excuse me. June 19th. Uh, Mr. Mayor, once the matter is reconsidered, it can only be reconsidered once. Once, correct. I'm saying so if it was says, not reconsidered this evening. It, it could be reconsidered at the next council city, city council meeting. Regularly scheduled, right. June 19th. Okie dokie. That's a Roll call vote. Day session. Ms. Fernari? Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. The motion to reconsider passes with nine affirmative votes, one absent. The motion to reconsider is on the floor. Therefore, this matter is up for a vote yet again. I, I would say that since it was this close, all aldermen should be present for this vote. I disagree completely. With it being this close? I make a motion then that we, we consider this on the 19th when the other when all aldermen are present. Let, let's make sure. Uh, you let's motion to well amend the motion so that to to, to June 19th. I don't think there's a motion on the floor. There is. No, the, there's not. There's, there's a, not a motion on the floor. The motion to approve this matter has not yet been offered. Yeah, the motion to reconsider has been brought back. Okay. And it's been voted on unanimously. So I would say that I'm making a motion that all aldermen be present since the vote was this close. No, I think what I was saying procedurally, item 11A should first come back on the floor. Okay. And and needs then, to be a motion then, to bring then, it to the floor. And then you, then you would have the opportunity. Right. No problem. Is there a motion to approve item 11A? So moved. Motion by Cummings? Second. Second by Marks. Discussion. Now I can make the motion that all aldermen be present, that we well, move the, but to date certain of June 19th. You're, you're, you're moving to um, 
delay. to delay this matter to, to a date certain. To a date certain of June 19th. I think it's important that all aldermen be here if it's this close. That motion requires a second and is debatable. Correct. I'll second now debatable. Comments from the dais? Alderman Burkhart. Yes, my question would be, do we know all of us are going to be here June 19th? Isn't, that, anybody, always isn't question. that always the question? Well, is, does anybody plan to be I missing? Don't. seems to me that, well, I'll refrain from commenting. Alderman Malata? I do not plan to be absent on June 19th. However, I take my mother to a vascular neurologist on June 12th to find out what her options are for a 9 millimeter aneurysm in her brain. If he suggests that we take action soon, I will not be here on the 19th. But I can't say that one way or the other. Respectfully speaking, it appears to me that the good alderman, Mr. Marks, realizes that there are probably enough votes to advance this matter. And, oh, 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 and respectfully speaking, um, I know that the would-be purchaser, myself, and others know that the alderman who is not present this evening is going to vote no. I do know that. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, so we are delaying matters for nothing else but theater. Let's make a decision, folks. We're hired to make a decision. If you wish to say to this would-be purchaser, forget it. I'd rather you not show me what you might do. I'd rather you leave me ignorant, and then I'll support you. Then that's the decision of the council. So that's my suggestion. I'm 100% certain. Let's just vote. Okay. Madam Recording Secretary, take the vote. Now, this is on the motion to... To approve. To, no, no, sir. No, there's a motion pending, Mr. Mayor. It's a motion to... I haven't heard either the one that made the motion yes. or the second... Yes, the motion to withdraw, was... To withdraw the motion to defer this matter to... Okay, the motion to defer is offered by Alderman Marks. Is there the second or concur? No, the seconder must concur, Alderman Kilberg. No, I, <laughs> do you motion to, or do you concur with the motion to withdraw the motion to delay? Uh, no, I think it would be appropriate to have all on the Okay, folks. Can, point of clarification. How many votes would be needed in the positive with eleven of us present? All ten, 10 plus the mayor. Six. Six. It's a simple majority to defeat no, no, the I'm motion sorry. to delay. To delay. To, to sell the. It's still late. Yep. To defeat the motion to delay requires simple majority. To uh, delay the matter, there's a motion and a second on the floor. The motion is offered by Alderman Marks, seconded by Alderman Killeberg. Jean, please take the roll. Mike Bruno? Nay. Sarah Burkhardt? Nay. Don Cummings? Nay. Becky Ruby? Nay. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Nay. Richard Marks? Nay. Gene McGowan? Nay. Jim, I'm sorry, Robert Swanson? Nay. Motion is defeated eight votes to one. Entertain a motion to approve. No, the, the motion is on the floor, okay, Mr. It. Mayor. Alderman Cummings and Alderman Marks, I believe. Gene, take the roll, please. On item 11A. And again, this requires two thirds of the corporate authority, requires eight affirmative votes, and I have the opportunity to vote. Correct. Yes, Alderman McGowan? Just for clarification for the public, I know, but can you please oh, yes. elaborate We've, on what we're voting on? We are now? voting on uh, the agreement as stipulated in item 11A, and that is to sell this subject property at $775,000, which equates to 100% of the appraisal price. It should also be noted that part of that agreement allows the would-be purchaser a 60-day review of that property for environmental issues and included an additional 135 days with respect to some additional tenants related to that contract. So it's, it's, a, it's a ways off. Is that clear? Oh. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Mike Bruno? Aye. 
Chair Burkhardt? Aye. Donald Cummings? Aye. Becky Ruby? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Craig Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Nay. Jean McGowan? Aye. Robert Swanson? Aye. And I vote aye as well. That brings the total aye votes to nine, the nay votes to one. The matter is resolved. New business, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Kiefer? No. Oh, oh. Alderman Burkhart? No, I, I just want to speak up for Alderman Radecki, who's not here. I, I don't think it's fair to say, with all due respect, Mayor, that you sure. know how he's going to vote. And uh, I know that I've come in here thinking I knew how I was going to vote, and I've been swayed by the opinions and the arguments of my uh, of my colleagues and so I, I just take exception to that that uh, I don't I don't think it's fair to ever say uh, that we know someone's vote before they actually cast it so thank you I respect that um, for what it's worth I did receive a correspondence from Alderman Radecki this evening at almost six o'clock uh, indicating that um, he would not be supporting the, the matter so that's why I shared that so every once in a while People change their mind. Oh, I know. I've I, don't, I know. We don't see it off. <laughs> I've seen it often. Holy God in heaven. It's like. You haven't seen that before, have you? I've seldom seen what's seldom described. Dr. Kiefer, welcome back. Thank you. Well, I would like to uh, bring the attention to the mayor and the uh, city council. Um, what uh, is a uh, proposed uh, project for the Campana building? where there's a proposal to put in 80 units in a factory building. And uh, I know it's uh, Batavia, but I think maybe the city of Geneva would be able to make a comment on, uh, on it. Um, to me, it's, you know, it seems driving in there, it seems that it's a factory building and it's kind of a question whether it could ever be suitable for um, a residence. Also, whether that location is going to be suitable for um, a high-density residence. I know other cities, I talked to somebody from Woodridge where they had a similar uh, kind of a development in town and eventually they built an old people's home next to it and eventually they had to move the uh, first project out into the periphery in uh, Woodridge. Um, I know the uh, building has some problems. There, there's unacceptable levels of radon. Um, and uh, also, I, this week, I just lost a patient to lung cancer who worked with asbestos. So I think that could be a question. And uh, I just, I wonder if we're going to have this, uh, a lot of momentum to have a development where we might be bringing people in there to live there that. Uh, it may not be the healthiest environment for them. So I wonder if we could kind of consider what's going on down there and maybe make some comments to Batavia. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Emily Erickson. I live at 1851 Allen Drive I'm in the neighborhood of Allendale. And I'm here as well to speak about the proposed Campana project. Um, being a Geneva resident, um, I wanted to open this conversation publicly and on the record, um, speaking about some of the obvious points, but want to point it out to everybody that we know it's a very unique situation that it falls within Batavia city limits, but really within Geneva city borders. Um, I think if I look back um, from the last city council meeting, I don't know if it was really the last one, but regarding the Prairie Winds development and how concerned some of the citizens were, whether it be traffic and um, within their neighborhoods or you know, whatever their exact issues were, but that there were a few things that we could learn from that that the aldermen spoke directly to. Uh, to. Um, one of them, I think Alderman Cummings made the comment that just because you can't do anything about it doesn't mean that we should do nothing. Um, I know this is very unique and I listened to the Batavia city officials. They stated that they feel that there needs to be some, some type of cross jurisdictional communication and that it was imperative because this was an issue and a situation that we've never experienced before. And it's going to not only affect 
Geneva residents, but Batavia as well, and everybody should be made aware. Communication should be open, and um, all voices should be heard. Um, the other thing that I took away from that meeting was that forming groups far in advance before, before things come about is imperative as well. Um, I know you also spoke to that, that, that just because it's too late in the game, we should learn from that, and I feel that that's why I'm here tonight, is to make sure that we don't make that same mistake and that all lines of communication are open with the city of Batavia and with us, with the residents. We'd like to know what's going on. We're feeling a little powerless right now because we know that you know, this ultimately lies within the decision of Batavia. Um, so with that said, that's why I chose to speak tonight and um, hopefully we'll be hearing more, um, whether it's from you guys or for the city of Batavia, but we just ask that there's a lot of open communication, a lot of thought taken and, um, and hear our voices as well. So thank you. I had, a question, I had a question. Uh, am I correct in that there's an organizational meeting that's going to be taking place this week here in Geneva? And that that Alderman and the, and the mayor will be attending? Mm -hmm. There's a, well, we can I answer that. Because I just learned about that late today, that uh, there's some type of a meeting taking place involving uh, Geneva residents and, and members of the city council. Mm -hmm. All right, so I will take that. So what I, I don't know, has anyone else received any communication Steve, as it relates to this? If no. I answer your question. No, I'm just asking if anyone else, maybe I missed something. Okay, no, you didn't, and I'll tell you why. You missed something because I figured you wouldn't let me speak, and I didn't think you should be there. Um, I live in Allendale, so I thought it would be useful to have me and my neighbors meet with the mayor and the alderman of the Fifth Ward for an informal discussion about this issue. I did not think that there was value in having a formal City of Geneva discussion about it at this point, because at the time I scheduled it, there was nothing formal filed with the City of Batavia yet. It's all just talk. Uh, at one point, I even tried to have uh, members of the people who were proposing to develop it, but then we decided that was a bit premature. So it was an informal discussion with Allendale residents, myself, Swanson, and Kevin Burns. And that was set for Wednesday. Did that answer your question? You know, I thought this is a Batavia issue and that it's not a fifth ward issue necessarily. I think it's an entire, it's an issue that concerns all of Geneva residents. And I see signs that say no campaign on the east side in the third ward. Uh, you know, I, you know, if it's not my issue, uh, if it's not the city of Geneva's yeah. issue, then maybe I'm missing something here. But yes. I think it's something that city is concerned about. I've seen signs no campana in all five wards of the city of Geneva. So, uh, I mean, if, if you guys, you know, that's fine. I just, I just want clarification because I, I would have thought that no more it might have been appropriate three. to let the entire council know about yeah, this in yeah, advance. Uh, well, I got, I got to got to To uh, amplify what Alderman Maladro said, the reason why the entire council is not invited to this particular session, well, which is... No, no, but Mayor, well, I don't think we all need to be invited, but I think it would be helpful to know what's taking place. Well, let, let me, there's, there's something that's peculiar. Since, we've, you know, since we're lobbying here for the last hour to sort of process what we want to get processed, I guess I'd like to know a little bit about why we're excluded and why select nope. aldermen were involved no, in this Well, number process. one, nobody's excluded. Number I two, I, I cannot, nor can Mr. Malodra and Mr. Swanson. Yeah, if we don't know about it, it is sort of excluding us, isn't it, Mayor? Well, so let me, let me put it, no, it's not, because it's illegal for more than three aldermen to meet at a meeting. You know that. I'm not saying that we need to be in attendance, Mayor. All I'm saying is that it would be nice that we're aware of the meeting, so that if we're asked, we can answer that we're going to have aldermen present, the mayor's going to be present, and they're going to gather information on behalf of the council. We I'm don't know that I'm information on behalf of the council. I'm there to listen to the residents of Allendale. Right. Pure and simple. Those so, residents invited me via Mr. Malodra and Mr. Swanson, and I'm happy to attend. Wednesday evening, and Ms. Erickson, you perhaps can agree with this. Mm -hmm, Wednesday evening, so. June 7th at 7.30, or 7 o'clock, I believe it is. No. 7.30? 6.30. 30. 30. We'll be there as early as 6. That's it. And much like the meetings I went to today with a number of neighbors 
I didn't think, my God, I should inform the entire council of this. I suspect that if this organization who is opposed to this, for whatever reason, wants to branch out and have separate inter, or excuse me, meetings with their respective aldermen, that will <coughs> likely happen, I, I suspect. So, with respect to Ms. Erickson's comment about open dialogue with Batavia, I can assure you it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, no question about it. Wonderful. No question about it. So, yeah. So I'm looking forward to listening. I offer no <laughs> statements with respect to the development mm -hmm. other than what the city of Geneva is allowed to comment on. That's it. So no one's trying to hide anything. Correct. And I did not mean to say or imply anything that this is not a Geneva issue. However, there is one neighborhood that bears the brunt of the change, and that is Allendale. So I see nothing wrong with talking to and listening to the residents of Allendale and then opening it up to broader discussion. And if you chose, if you would do it differently, that's great, but that's just not the way that I thought it should be approached. Let's take things in smaller bites. I wasn't trying to keep anything secret. I knew that when we put the flyers out, <laughs> The 10 that I dropped were going to blow somewhere quickly enough. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Erickson. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is uh, Jenna Dempsey. I didn't intend to speak tonight, so um, it's kind of off the cuff. But I also live in Allendale. Um, I'm at 722 Red Wing Drive, um, and I just wanted to state for the record that we are very anxious to talk with the entire council about it, and we do really feel strongly that it is an entire city of Geneva issue. And we are extremely concerned about many, many things that we are anxious to discuss, and as Emily said, open up some dialogue. Um, so we just hope that we can talk with you all in the future, and it is quite convenient to have So Mr. could I Malaga ask a question? Should I cancel the meeting on Wednesday? No. I'm Please a little bit not. concerned about it. You want to talk to everybody, we can do that, and it will take place in a very well-controlled, governed process. And I think that might be a good idea now, since you have said that's what you're you know, most interested in. That is not my intent, Mr. Malaga. Are you sure? OK. Make we are very much looking forward to speaking with you. I just wanted to make it clear that we do feel that this is something that does affect, as you said, certain neighborhoods do bear the brunt, um, which is why we are anxious to talk together with our neighbors, which is, which is really, I think, the main point of the Thank meeting. You. Exactly. Um, Would you agree the last 10 minutes discussions probably helped build awareness and it's maybe energized parts of the community that may not have been energized before? Yes, yes. that is the intent. <laughs> <laughs> you can thank me. <laughs> the floor is yours, Ms. Dempsey. Is it, if, if I have, still. as I said, I wasn't intending to speak, so I'm trying to be very. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I have a question. Alderman? Um, so I guess. Um, in the interest of full disclosure or clarification, are you and the other lady who spoke just recently part of the group that's putting out the signs saying, like, say no to Campana? There, there are many people involved in that. And are you, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but Emily, are you both part of that group or is this a different group that you're a part of? <coughs> you're both part of say, the say no to the <coughs> Campana building? I mean, I wouldn't call it a group. It's, it's, it's not something that is a formal organization in any way. Okay, I, just, I was just wondering, because um, if you say like information gathering, it's not um, like an unbiased means of information gathering and opening the discussion. You're coming at it from a particular viewpoint, so I, just, I wasn't sure which viewpoint that was, so I just wanted that clarification. Um, also, Alderman Swanson and Maladra, uh, and Mayor Burns, after the, your meeting with the mayors, would it be possible to maybe share some feedback with the other council members here? Um, I've received, I've already received an email or two from a resident um, with questions about the Campana building. Um, and there are signs around the fourth ward as well, which is my ward. So I know, I, an, I anticipate more questions and I, I just want to get as much information as possible for myself. So um, is that doable? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. It's also worth noting that this week there will be a link from the City of Geneva's website to the City of Batavia's website with respect to this proposal. Um, so in terms of details and facts, we've also been advised, I believe, as early as actually today, that there may be, who knows, a formal submission as early as July. Again, it's a 50-50 proposition, I think. But once all that's posted in Batavia, there will be a link on our website to Batavia. Um, to Alderman Kilberg's point, if we want to use this council chamber as an opportunity to express opinion, and I know you know this, Ms. Dempsey, Ms. Erickson, I know you know this, Dr. Kiefer, I know you know this, there will be folks here in favor of, opposed to, uncertain, <coughs> curious, what have you. So uh, in terms of a fifth Monday, we might want to take 10 Sundays. But nevertheless, but that should not be construed as the city of Geneva adjudicating a development per se. It's just a matter of facilitating information. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dempsey. Yes. Samantha Molesky. I'm also a resident of Allendale. Good evening. And I live in 1740 Pheasant Run Place. And I want to speak to something she spoke of with um, Craig. And we really appreciate the dialogue that he has opened. You know, he is our alderman. And um, it's very meaningful to us that he's taken this step to talk with us. And I don't think us, you know, I studied the tape and the discussions three different times about the what is it, prairie, prairie, winds. prairie winds and Fisher Farms issue. And it just brought up, I mean, it's a completely different situation, but it brought up a lot of issues that, you know, we were thinking of going, moving forward with the Campana project with questions in our mind. And um, so engaging with the entire council isn't saying we don't want to specifically engage with our, you know, elected aldermen. Um, it's just for purposes of thinking, having some forward thinking, and I think Alderman Radecki said it, he said, you know, in that meeting, the May 15th, 2017 meeting, he said, um, it was important to learn something from this experience and things that we can do better and improve. Step number one is to communicate with Geneva residents. We can do a better job of notifying our residents of projects that affect our city he suggested forming groups far in advance before they become things that we can't do anything about. Um, and not, we're not saying we necessarily, you know, we just want information. We're not asking for you to make any decisions. We realize that that's not the authority that you guys have in this situation. But that, um, that conversation that took place, there were things that got brought up, like the intergovernmental agreements and, um, you know, road issues, traffic issues, parking issues, whether or not like what cuts through where, um, where it allows the curb cutouts to be, where the traffic flow is going. And those are all things that I would ask you guys, you know, have you read the plan? Have you read the most recent one that is, was submitted Friday? Have you looked at the zoning variances that they were asking? Have you guys looked to see if there are any intergovernmental agreements like what happened in that situation and bring them to everyone's attention so we're not having this conversation last minute? And all those types of things. Have you looked at the traffic study? It's all on the Batavia's website. So we're just asking to have like a free flow of information, have a discussion. And, um, you know, I know that you guys, um, aldermen in our ward, there are a lot of people who, um, you know, maybe don't take the time to read everything. So they are leaning hard on, you know, our elected officials to answer questions from them. And so I appreciate the role that they're taking and like facilitating that information flowing through. So I do think it's valuable that, you know, we have these types of discussions. Um, and that's all. I just, I just ask that you guys be informed about the issue and not, you know, have a come lately situation like what just happened with the prairie winds or yeah, the Fisher Farms issue. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ruby. I understand why you're here. I just wanted to make sure that you're also attending Batavia City Council. Okay. Um, I, I personally think that's where you're going to have the most effect. Um, and also today we did get an email um, from the developer, David Block. Have you 
I, I think this was posted on the website, on the, the NOTA Campana website. Are you familiar with, with that? Yeah, I'm um, aware of that. Okay. That email was sent to all of you. Okay, so he, where he addressed the traffic concerns. Yeah, and then, it was forwarded to you by. Right, okay. So I just wanted to point out that he did, um, I guess just for the record, he, he did put his name out here. He addressed the traffic concerns um, and encouraged people to contact him with, with further concerns. Um, so just for the public, his name is David Block, and I'll just give his um, email, dblock at evergreenreg.com. Thank you. Anyone else? From the dais? Motion to adjourns in order. Move. Alderman Marks. Aye. Alderman Swanson. All in favor of adjourning this meeting, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you.